Today we're going to create a script using auto touch that will automatically scroll a, a web page. Let me show you what this script will end up doing once you finish creating it. Let's go ahead and attempt to open up the script. The first thing it'll do is it'll pop up a menu for you asking you how fast you want it to scroll. The script will also remember your last choice. So let's go ahead and run this now. So as you can see, the script is scrolling through the web page. So let's go ahead and get down to what it would take to have this script run. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go, go ahead and create your scripts. So the first one I'm going to name scroll with menu. I'm going to go ahead and create another script, my copy to all script. And the last script I'm going to create here is going to be scroll LUA. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and just do a scroll on the screen. Click the record button and just rec record a scroll. Then I'm gonna end it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go to the home auto touch records folder. I'm gonna go to that script that recorded my scroll. So this is my scroll right here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Gonna go back to my scroll.lua. Gonna define a function, and I'm also gonna call it scroll. I'm gonna paste this here. Then I'm gonna end the function. So now, anytime I call the function scroll, it's gonna go ahead and scroll. So now we're gonna go ahead and go to copy to all. We're just gonna create some variables. The variables that we're going to create are basically going to allow us to use the amount of time in seconds in our main script. Fourth of a second. I'm going to name fourth second, and that's going to be 250,000. So half a second is 500,000. One second is 1 million, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to do all the way up to seven and a half seconds. All right, now that we have the amount of seconds here on copy to all, we're going to go ahead and create our function. This function is going to call your menu. This is gonna be the part that's going to allow you to choose how much time you'd like to wait in between scrolls, function, all lowercase. I'm gonna name mine create menu. And the create menu is going to take three different variables. First one's gonna be my prompt. So this is what do you want your menu to say? Next is gonna take a table. So I named it my table. This is the amount of uh, values that your menu is going to show the user. It's going to show the user one second, two seconds, three seconds, so on and so forth. But you want to be able to specify in your menu how much to show the user. The last thing it'll take, it'll be my time. So my time is just a variable that will let the menu know what the last, what was the last option that the user chose. All right. So here I am on the auto touch document website. And uh, the way I got here was I went to autotouch.net, clicked on Lua on the left side. You're gonna go ahead and look for you're gonna go ahead and look for the dialog controls orientation function. This will give you an example on how to create a menu. So just wanted to show you guys where you could find more information about creating a menu on this um, on the documentation of autotouch.net. So back to this function here. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a entry label. So that's basically what will the user see when the menu is pulled up. So let's go ahead and call local entry label equals type, the controller type that we're looking to do. It's gonna be label and text equals, this is what you want the user to see, which will be my prompt, which is your first argument there. The next thing is your picker. So this is what it's gonna show the user all the seconds that they have to choose from. So local my picker type equals controller type picker. So there's a few arguments that the picker needs. So the first thing will be the title of the picker. I just tell the user to pick. And since I'm the user, I know exactly what I need to do. And I don't really use this, but I, I, I believe it is required. It's a key. And I just have that equal my pick. Value equals my time. This is basically what tells Lua that you want to be able to show what the last time that was chosen was. So this is what it'll default to as soon as it starts up. And the last thing is options equals 
my table. This is basically the options that the user is going to see. My table. The next thing to do is to create buttons. So you want to create a, a submit button and a cancel button. So the first button that we're going to create is going to be the submit button. So you're going to do type equals folder type dot button. Title of it is going to be submit. I like to give it a, a, a greenish color. You can uh, give it any other color. There's some examples in the auto touch documentation of what other colors you can give it. Give it a width. I take that directly from the auto touch documentation website. A flag, I'm just gonna give it flag one. All right, so last thing you wanna do is you wanna collect inputs and you're gonna go ahead and change that to tr or make that true. And for the second button, you can just uh, copy and paste this and you're just gonna change the title of it to cancel and the flag, you're gonna change that to two. All right, so so far we have our picker, we have our label, our picker, and the two buttons. Now that we have these, we want to go ahead and create the, the menu. The way that you do that is you call control. Actually, I need to change this button to button two. Local control or local controls. And what do you want your menu to have? So we want it to have our entry label. We want it to have our picker. We want it to have our two buttons. And the last thing that we want is we want it to actually bring up the menu. So I call the variable called bring menu. And you do that by using the function dialog, which if you remember is what we saw on the website. And the last thing is we want to return what the value of my picker is because we're going to use it for the scrolling and we're also going to use it to keep it and store it so that we remember it for future use. This is all that you're going to need in your copy to all script. Save that, go back. And now we're gonna go to our scroll with menu. So if you guys remember from the first video, first thing we got to do is we got to do the require function and we got to go ahead and bring in copy to all and we're also going to bring in scroll. The first thing that our scroll with menu script should do is it should re recall what the previous value was that the user gave us. So for that, we're gonna go ahead and create a function. We're gonna call it grab value. We're gonna go ahead and have it bring the value from a text file that we're going to create here in a little bit. And that text file will have it will have in it stored what the last thing that was chosen by the user was. So just follow along here with me and it'll start making a bit more sense. Local F assert IO open. So what you want to put under as the argument for open is the the absolute value of where that text file is going to be. This is going to be your absolute value. All right, so after this, this is where it might differ for you. I have a records folder, you should as well. And from here, after the records folder, if you're putting it in your records folder, just go ahead and type the name of the text file that you would create here. So call it quicksave.txt. Do that as read only because we only need to read it. And we're gonna close that off. Make sure there's no typos. Make sure this is exactly where you're writing your script. I am going to add one additional thing because I'm actually creating this in the tutorial folder that I created. We wanted to read it. So let's go ahead and do local time equals F read line. This variable basically reads everything that this file has. I took this directly from the Lua documentation, but the last two things is we wanna first close the file and we wanna go ahead and return what was listed on that file and we're gonna go ahead and all right so before we continue let's go ahead and create that text file so we're gonna go ahead and create new script and here just for now just for the purposes of continuing this tutorial go ahead and write one second here make sure there's no other lines in this file make sure it just says one second click save and you're just gonna call this quick save that txt All right, so now that, you ha now that you have this file created and it has one second in there, um, we're ready to continue our main script. So go ahead and the next function that you're going to write is what's going to set the value that that file has. So the, the last one we did is grab value. Now we're gonna go ahead and write set value. And that's gonna have one argument and that's how much time so what do we need to set the value to on that file? We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to use that assert function. 
The only difference is we're going to go ahead and do the W instead of R on the argument for write. So it's writing the file, writing on the file. And then we're going to change this to F write. The first thing we're doing is we're going to go ahead and make the file blank. And that's the way that you do it. You just put your quotation marks there. We're going to go ahead and write how much time. And we're going to do a new line. We're going to go ahead and close this now. We're going to write and to close our function. So let's go ahead and actually use our grab value function now. So we're going to go ahead and say local last time equals grab value. All right, the next thing we're doing is we're going to go ahead and just write the times that the user is going to have to choose from. So we'll just do my times. As you can see, I went up to 7.5 seconds. Before we continue, guys, go ahead and save this. Let's go back to tutorial. You see where quick save that txt has a .js on there, we need to fix that. That should not have a .js at the end. And that's perfect. All right, guys, so now that we have our times that we want our user to see, the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is bring our menu up for the user. So let's say local how much time equals create menu time in between scrolls. It takes the prompt, the times that the user should see, which is this variable my times, and the last value. If you remember, here it is, last time. So that's the value that the user chose last time. So let's go ahead and call it last time. So the next thing that we're going to do is, this is what's gonna allow us to basically turn this here, what the user chose, we're gonna turn that into actual seconds. So if how much time equals 0 0.25 of a second and make sure this matches exactly with what's here so these two should match then time equals fourth second so this fourth second that's defined on copy to all if you need to reference it again else if how much time equals 0 0.5 of a second, then time equals half second. So I'm going to do the same thing for all of our seconds, and I'm going to end it with an else statement. So if it doesn't match at all, I'm going to have it say else time equals fourth second. Then I'm going to end my if statement. So have it do all of these if you want it to show you all of them. For the sake of time, that's all I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to do 0.25 and 0.5. Last thing you do is we're going to do a for loop so that this pretty much runs forever. I'll do for i equals 1000, 1 minus 1. It's subtracting 1 every iteration, and we're going to start it up at 1000. The first thing we're going to do is any time that you involve any tapping or scrolling on auto touch, you want to always add a you sleep in between it. So we want to make sure that each time this for loop runs, it sleeps for half a second. If you don't put that there, the scrolling will, will not go very well. We're calling our scroll function. And then this is where we're going to take what the user put in into account. Time. So that's going to run one of these and we're going to write end for the end of our function and there you go you have a scroll with menu this these are the four files you should have again make sure that you spell them correctly if you spell them all correctly this should now work so i'm going to go ahead and run this in the safari app now all right that should work let's go ahead and Try it out now. And there you go. And to stop it, you just basically click on whatever you have that stops scripts for auto touch. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please drop me a like, subscribe if you like this content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.